Greetings and welcome to ValorTube.com. My name is Paul Lear. I am an original content provider at ValorTube.com and I'd like to welcome everybody to This Week in Prophecy. And we are going to start in the promised land where we try to always find something that's taken place in either Jerusalem or Israel or in and around the promised land. And we're going to start at the Dead Sea uh, this week. <laughs> uh, t- Times of Israel put this out. Nude and painted white, 200 volunteer models pose at the endangered <coughs> Dead Sea. Yep, they're painted white. They're completely naked. Um, oh, wow. The Dead Sea is disappearing, so this is a way to draw attention to the Dead Sea. We need to find a way to sustain the level or to bring fresh water into the Dead Sea, but at the same time keep all countries surrounding the water. Water is life, so they're worried about the Dead Sea just shrinking up and going away. Um <laughs> And so the models were painted white to represent Pillar's assault from the biblical story of Lot's wife, the Genesis character who was turned into a pillar of salt when she looked back at Sodom, the ancient city that was in the Dead Sea region. I don't fear anyone turning to stone. That's quite a punishment. Uh, No hummus for maybe a year, but no death. So he's kind of poking a little fun at the story. Um, Dead Sea's not going anywhere. In fact, if anything, it's going to go come to life at some point in the future. From Zechariah 14, verse 8. And on that day, living water will flow out from Jerusalem, half of it toward the eastern sea, that'd be the Dead Sea, and the other half toward the western sea, that'd be the Mediterranean Sea, in summer and winter alike. On that day, the Lord be Jesus will become king over all the earth, the Lord alone and his name alone. So uh, let's just read down. Uh, before I do that, the point is the Dead Sea is not going anywhere. And if any, anything, it's going to be a place of abundant life because fresh water will go there and it will no longer be this graveyard of just salty mineral water. Um, but, but take a look at what's going to happen geographically. Uh, all the land from Geba to Ramon, south of Jerusalem, will be turned into a plain. Uh, all those mountains are going to be gone. But Jerusalem will be raised up and will remain in her place from the Benjamin Gate to the side of the first gate to the corner gate and from the Tower of Hananel to the Royal Wine Press. People will live there and never again will there be an utter destruction, so Jerusalem will dwell safely. And that's not the first place the Bible talks about um, the plain of the earth. It's in Revelation. Revelation makes it pretty clear all the mountains will disappear, all the islands will disappear. There's going to be some serious uh, geological upheaval at some point in the future um, prior to the return of Christ. So this gives a little hint of it. Uh, big earthquakes, a series of earthquakes talked about in Revelation. Also, Zechariah touches on it, and Isaiah touches on it along with uh, volcanic activity as well. So, at any rate, uh, you know, the point was what are we going to do about the Dead Sea? They're worried about the Dead Sea going away. I'm going to draw some attention to it. Everybody take a bunch of nudes out in the middle of the desert. It's not going anywhere. If anything, it's going to be a place of abundant life. So, which, which (laughs) we're going to transition from the Dead Sea to the rapture. And this is in the San Francisco, San Francisco Chronicle. Uh, The idea of rapture, blame it on COVID. And so this is a story within days of a COVID diagnosis. One 30-year-old man came to believe a religious rapture was imminent and thought he was speaking with dead relatives. His case is one example of what scientists are discovering about how the coronavirus affects the brain. You know, he 
had this crazy religious vision. Holy cow. It's because of Corona. It's not real, by the way. Um, this rapture thing, science proves it. COVID-19's effect on the brain is one of the hottest areas of coronavirus research. Uh, we got some fancy anatomy charts here. We're going to prove that this idea of a rapture is pure fiction because the corona made this pop into this guy's head. No way a whole bunch of people are just going to disappear into thin air. Uh, and here's how this happens. According to the critic and science, the olfactory bulb sends a signal from the nose to the brain. Some suspect that the virus may impede cognition by disrupting the olfactory bulb, which connects to the temporal lobe, home of the hippocampus, key to memory and thinking. And as what happens, the coronavirus appears to trick the body into producing abnormal antibodies that can lead to brain diseases, including encephalitis and Guillain-Barre syndrome. So, you know... Now, this is just utter blasphemy to these folks, but what, you know, what if this person had a little discussion with the Lord Almighty saying, hey, the rapture is imminent. And I know that would just be perceived as crazy talk in scientific and critical thinking circles. But the Bible does say that there is this thing called a rapture. And uh, the Apostle Paul points out, 1 Corinthians 15, that the dead in Christ will rise first, then those of us who are still alive will meet them in the air. And so we get that from 1 Corinthians 15, will be changed. Also in Thessalonians talks a little bit about it. But at any rate, just so you know, so you could even, you can see how this is going down. You know, there will be a scientific, reasonable <clears throat> explanation when this event actually happens. And they are locked and loaded and ready to address it. And, you know, there will be some rational explanation as to why all these people popped up out of the grave and some of them were transformed and rose into the clouds. There'll be a reason. They'll be able to explain it away. Um, bank on it. Um but and they're already attacking the notion and this poor guy had coronavirus and it tricked his brain into thinking that a rapture is going to happen that's awful you need to have a reasoned discussion with this person set him straight get that corona out of his brain um don't need these things going around <laughs> from the rapture we're going to go to beijing in the People's Republic of China. And we care about what China is doing because of Revelation 9. And Revelation 9 talks about a 200 million uh, man army. And um, they're going to be deadly. And they're going to take out a third of humanity, according to the scripture. And so we pay attention to what's being said, what's coming out of China. Uh, it's inevitable that China will take the upper hand over the U.S. Chinese state media celebrates new nu nuclear-capable 21,000-mile-per-hour missile that can circle the Earth in low orbit, big deal, before striking anywhere from space in minutes. Uh, and this came out of Financial Times earlier in the week said the test showed China had made astounding progress on hypersonic weapons. It was launched in August, circled the globe at low orbit, and missed the target by a couple dozen miles. Now, that's, you know, what's two dozen miles if you got a nuclear warhead? I suppose it would make a difference between hitting the downtown of a city and some suburbs. Uh, or if they're trying to target a specific military installation. U.S. intelligence was caught off guard as U.S. is one of eight nations developing their own hypersonic missiles. An op-ed in Chinese state media said the test shows the unstoppable trend that China is narrowing the gap with the U.S. and some key military technologies. Uh, we're going to scroll down. This is kind of how the, the idea would work. Uh, how a fractional orbital bombardment system would evade U.S. missile defenses. Now, typically, 
traditional intercontinental ballistic missiles have a higher trajectory. Those would be picked up. Early warning radar and missile defenses based in Alaska, also scattered throughout probably North America as well. But a fractional orbital bombardment system, which can circle the Earth in low orbit, uh, evades these systems that we have. Uh, And the, the report cited five unnamed intelligence sources uh that china launched the long march rocket in august carrying a hypersonic glide vehicle into low, low orbit uh, circled the globe before descending toward its target but the issue is is that where most of our defenses are over the north pole this would allow the chinese to be able to strike the united states from the south which is apparently So the article suggests that we have um, limited defense capabilities from the south of the United States, so they say. Now, I don't know if you want to believe that, but that's what's being suggested. I'd like to think our leaders aren't that short-sighted that they would leave one part of the country completely vulnerable, but possible. Um, scroll down here a little bit further you know in in the backdrop of all this china continues to rattle the sabers talk tough about taking over taiwan or you know something else that's going on i think we touched on this last week all the resources being flooded into the pacific theater over this issue um we're war gaming we got uh What is it? Taiwan has warned China will be ready for a full-scale invasion of the island by 2025. Uh, The United Kingdom's Queen Elizabeth aircraft carrier led a huge naval exercise alongside the U.S. and Japan in the region at the weekend. China uh, and Russia, I believe, did some things in the Sea of Japan. China's fortifying and building... um, infrastructure on their east coast across the way from uh, from taiwan that's the longchan air base Weihan air base and the Zhengzhou air base they have construction taking place at those those installations um, they mean business and taiwan's showing off its stuff and they're banking on us. And here's the comments about Russia and China staging joint naval drills in the Sea of Japan. And Russia Russia didn't help this week. They also came out and said that, uh, you know, they recognize Taiwan as being part of China. <laughs> He's just stirring the pot. So, uh, okay, go right ahead. And so we're going to go from um, Southeast Asia, the Pacific Theater, and we're going to go to Lebanon. Um, before we get into Lebanon, open your doors, O Lebanon, that the fire may consume your cedars. Wail, O Cypress, for the cedar has fallen. The majestic trees are ruined. And that's the theme of the end times in regards to Lebanon is fire and destruction. And it takes place throughout the country, mostly on the, uh, well, let's just go. We'll just scroll on up here to to Lebanon and it's mainly across the ridge this northern part or all these this area here where you see the green uh this is where the bulk of their their trees are located this will all be consumed by fire according to scripture at some point in the future and all this coastland will be wiped out that's what it states it's stated there it's in Jeremiah in a couple of other places i can't recall off the top of my head but the theme for lebanon in the end times is fire and destruction It'd be a wasteland is the idea and uh they had a rough week um you know it would appear lebanon is on the verge of civil war again uh, the lights went out last week they lost electricity for about a day iran supplied some diesel to fuel their electrical generators, which power electricity for the country. 
And then this week, actually, just this just came out today. Amid civil war fears, this is out of the Times of Israel, Hezbollah chief reveals terror group has 100,000 fighters. And of all people, now listen to who Hezbollah goes after. And this is Nezrallah, the head of the Hezbollah, accuses head of right-wing Christian party of seeking to reignite sectarian violence in Lebanon. So they're blaming it. If any violence breaks out, it's because of those Christians. They're the ones starting it. Um, so if you want to read this in more detail, again, go to timesofisrael.com amid civil war fears. Hezbollah chief reveals terror group has 100,000 fighters. Now, of course, this can't be verified um, larger than the size. If, if it is 100,000, it's larger than the size of Lebanon's armed forces, which is estimated to be about 85,000. So they're dropping a little hints like, hey, we can take out Lebanon's forces and we will um, we'll run this thing. Hezbollah says that. Um, and here's a quote from Nasrallah. We have prepared those fighters with their diverse weapons to defend our territory, our oil and gas that is being robbed before the eyes of the Lebanese to protect the dignity and sovereignty of our country from any aggression and terrorism and not for internal fighting. So let's just translate that. There's a mouthful right there. They see the natural gas that is out in the Mediterranean as they are the rightful owners of that. They want to take that from Israel. That's what that's all about. And so you're seeing the stage being set for Ezekiel 38 and 39 to steal and take plunder. Now, they're probably going to have the support. Well, they will have the support of Russia, Iran, Turkey, arguably Libya, and Sudan, or the Sudan or Ethiopia, one of those two, two countries. But uh, their territory, claiming their oil and gas that is being robbed before their eyes. Well, it's right offshore. Everybody knows it's not. It's in Israeli waters. But yet you can see this, and then they call it aggression and terrorism, and that these fighters are not for a civil war. It's to go after Israel. It's just a veiled shot at Israel. And so looking at this situation, my guess is, uh, you know, if it's where we think we are in prophecy, Lebanon's going to have the support of ultimately Russia and Iran and Hezbollah is a proxy of Iran's. And we're going to get into that here in just a little bit too. Uh, so again, you this is just another example of how things are falling into place. Uh, and Nez, <laughs> Nezrallah goes on to say, don't miscalculate. Be wise and behave. Learn a lesson from all your wars and all our wars. So he's not going to be the one that does anything. It's going to be... Um, they're going to have the support of Russia if they do something. The support of Iran would would be my guess. That's just speculation on my part, but we know where this this part of the world's ultimately headed. We know who has the resources, and we know who is economically viable right now, and that's Israel. I mean, their their economy is booming, and they're about to boom even more when they start distributing and selling resources and natural gas. They're already exporting gas to Jordan and to Egypt. <clears throat> and the big prize will be ultimately Western Europe. And when that starts to happen, that will cut into Russia's pocketbook, Turkey's pocketbook, Iran's pocketbook, and Hezbollah is going to say Lebanon's pocketbook. And they're all going to want to go take it. Um, but, Jen, you know, again, just another example of how you can see these things falling into place and all the violence that took place this week in in uh in lebanon up in beirut i mean you had people just out there shooting weapons appeared to be indiscriminately but just stirring stuff up people running all over the place so um and while we're talking about ezekiel 38 and 39 we're going to take a look at the verse um 
Sheba and Dedan, that'd be modern-day Saudi Arabia, and the merchants of Tarshish, arguably Europe, Western Europe, and all its leaders will say to you, and that's Magog, Gog of Magog, have you come to see spoil? Have you assembled your hosts to carry off plunder, to carry away silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods, to seize great spoil? Well, I would argue that great spoil will be natural gas and oil. Uh, and they're just standing there. Saudi, the Saudis are going to stand there and they're just going to question it. They're not going to do anything. They don't jump in on behalf of, um, on behalf of Israel. They just kind of stand there and watch. They're going to question it. Are you really going to do this? And then it goes on to say, you know, Hey, you will come from your place out of the uttermost parts of the North. You and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses, a great host and a mighty army come up against my people Israel like a cloud covering the land. Uh, in the latter days, I will bring you against my land that the nations may know me when through you, O Gog, I vindicate my holiness before their eyes. In other words, you're going to get a spanking. You're going to get a divine spanking like you've never had before. And which leads us to this happened this past week. Uh, why Saudi Iran relations are fine for now. So apparently there've been some negotiations or some proposed negotiations, discussions between the Saudis and the Iranians. I see relations between Saudi Arabia and Iran are fine and may lead to renewed bilateral ties. So having a little moment of, Hey, let's get along. And on the surface, that's a little fishy. Um, but here's why, um, and you can see both these, both these countries are, are in disagreement and we're going to look at things from the standpoint of Iran and we're going to look at things from the standpoint of Saudi Arabia. Okay. So Saudi Arabia is having issues down in, on their Southern border with Yemen and they're wanting to, um, support the Hadi government, but yet Iran is bringing in these little rebels, these Houthi rebels and Yemen has been in civil war for holy cow since what, 2014, at least 2014, 15 going on seven years. And you know, the Iranian proxy Houthi rebels have been firing missiles from Yemen into Saudi Arabia, reaching the cap, reaching Riyadh and the airport in the, uh, in Saudi Arabia. Now the Saudis for their part are sending rebel factions into Southern Syria through Jordan, um, sending their proxies to support keeping stuff stirred up in Syria. Yet Iran supports president Assad in Syria. So Iran is for the current government staying in place. The Saudis are for uh, factions trying to break that up and keep that place in civil war. The Saudis are seeking ties with the current government in Iraq. However, they just had elections, and it would appear that the Shiite groups supported by Tehran in Iran made the, made the greatest gains. So again, every place you look in the Middle East, the Saudis and the Iranians are at odds with, with each other, which takes us to back to Beirut in Lebanon. Tehran supports their proxy, Hezbollah, who just announced they have 100,000 troops. And the Saudis are putting rebel factions in, supporting the current government, trying to stabilize things as they are. But you can see Iran's goal is to control everything to the Mediterranean Sea. It's in their economic interest to do that because if they can distribute oil and gas via pipeline from Iran to the Mediterranean Sea, it saves them a lot of cost, saves dollars. They have more access to Europe instead of taking all of their crude, all of their oil and gas and shipping it by big freighter boat around the Arabian Peninsula, up through the Red Sea, through the Suez Canal, 
then they get access to the um, the Mediterranean Sea. So again, it's it's religious in the sense of it's uh, Muslim against Muslim, Shia. That'd be the Iranians, the Shia, the Shiites, versus the Saudis, and that would be Sunni. Uh, and there are economic implications too. Um, you know, works better for the Saudis if they can keep uh, Iranian oil and gas going all the way around the Arabian Peninsula instead of having that go straight across. Iraq, Syria, into the western or the eastern Mediterranean. And then they have access to the western side of Europe. So that's what's going on there. And then lastly, um, this is coming up on a month now. We still have things taking place. This is off the coast of northwest Africa. This is La Palma. Um, this is the volcano on the La Palma Island. This is a live shot. Um, it's becoming more violent. You can see what at least three to four open fissures. The main one, that's pretty impressive. One, two, three, four. Uh, and this continues like the, the ocean is this way. And this thing just continues to gradually break open holes and continues to poor lava earthquakes are deeper and becoming stronger i think there was one today on october 18th that uh 4.6 on the richter scale in the neighborhood of 35 to 40 kilometers below the surface so the idea is the deeper the earthquakes and the stronger the earthquakes uh the more stuff you're going to have coming to the surf surface with greater intensity, you got to relieve that pressure somewhere. Um, and we're watching that happen. Um, and you know, the ultimate concern would be is that like a quarter or a fifth of the Southwest part of the Island breaks off, slides into the, to the Atlantic and creates a real big, um, tsunami that would impact the um it'd be the eastern coasts of both north and south america and this is all taking place right here here's la palma we'll put a little circle around that and then back that out let's get this so everybody can get a feel for how that's working but you can see what you know slips and then it'd be like throwing a rock or a boulder into a pond and watching the ripple effect of the water except for this would be on a much greater scale it'd be a quarter of an island and the ripple effect it would create and i've seen the united states has a position paper on it they estimate uh, this part of Florida, Georgia would be the greatest impact. Uh, U S Navy wrote a position paper estimating waves up to 30 feet. Now, if you listen to the doomsday scenario created by the history channel <laughs> and the BBC, they're saying it could be up to 150 feet hit the East coasts, 12 miles inland. And then some of this stuff closer by on the backside of it could receive a 300 foot tidal wave, but it's all just talk. Hopefully we don't find anything out about it, but that continues to happen. And that will be as of tomorrow, that will have been taking place for one month. So appreciate you guys taking the time, uh, to follow along and listen to this week in prophecy, uh, recommend everybody check out valortube.com. I know a lot of people complain about being censored, losing their freedom of speech, being shadow banned and followed by big tech and your voices silenced. Well, go to Valor Tube. Free speech there. How about that? There's an idea. Seems to be less and less with every day. But nonetheless, appreciate you guys watching. Catch you next week on This Week in Prophecy. Have a good one. Bye.